My Pokeballs are looking nice. Can I get a like for that? So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? guys and welcome to week three of my birthday vacation today we have forsaken the onesie and instead we are wearing the cutest of tiny burgundy crop tops and let's take a second to show you these wonderful leggings when you guys got these for me like two years ago they did not fit that well but now my pokeballs are looking nice Anyway, let's jump right into this because I am not 100% sure how long this is going to be. Today, the first day we're going to be talking about is November 18th and it is Mount Charleston Trip Day. We had decided to take a one night trip, two days, hiking all the time, and it's my first time to Mount Charleston. This is actually the longest running birthday plan I had had. I had planned this like in the middle of the year and initially the plan was going to involve a rented Jeep just so I could get the feel of how a Jeep would be because I've wanted one for so long. I had never even thought that I would be driving to Mount Charleston that day in my very own brand new Jeep. It was like a dream come true, let me tell you guys. I had a whole weekend of playing video games and just chilling on the couch so I didn't film anything, but as you can see behind me here, we are getting ready for a trip to Mount Charleston for one night, two days, and I'm so excited because I've never been there. It's always 20 degrees cooler there, and in fact, the day we're leaving, we have a chance of seeing two to four inches of snow, and then if we had stayed, we'd kind of be snowed in at 10 to 18 inches of snow. It snows in a relatively small window there, but if you get anywhere higher, since it is like an 8K elevation, you're gonna see a lot of snow on the top, and I'm just, I'm excited. Packed everything into the Jeep, put the seat back so we could fit absolutely everything because the two-door does have a ridiculously small amount of storage if you put the two other seats back and we're not taking anyone with us. I hope to get you some beautiful sights of things that look a little bit more like Seattle or a little bit more like Colorado even in the fall, spring, whenever they have a little bit of snow but not a lot in Aspen, I don't know. Of course we have to bring Eeyore, our hiking bags. It's annoying because I bought a brand new hiking bag that I was really excited about using, but it doesn't come until later today. So two to five, I can't wait that long. The crazy thing about that brand new, bigger hiking backpack was that as I was pulling my Jeep out of the driveway, the UPS guy was parked like right behind me and was in my way. So I was waiting and as I was waiting, he jumps out of the van and walks toward my front door. And I'm like, Jay, go get the package. And he's like, why? Just leave it there. No one's gonna steal it for a day. And I'm like, oh my God, grab the package. He goes and grabs the package. And lo and behold, at the exact moment we were leaving and two hours before it was supposed to be delivered was my backpack. So even though it wasn't fully loaded and ready to go to Mount Charleston, I was able to bring the backpack with me and switch over once I got there, which was really cool. It was like an uncanny moment of serendipity at the perfect time. So I didn't know what to expect when I was driving up to Mount Charleston. I knew that I was gaining some insane elevation on the way and I had no idea if part of it was gonna be like kind of snowy or part of it was gonna be a dirt road, but the entire way there, the entire hour was just on two very nice two lane freeways or highways, whatever you would call them. And it was so comfortable and nice, so much so that I said that Jay should come back with his Mazda RX-8 because the roads were just perfect for that kind of car. So even though I would always prefer to do some off-roading in Reaper rather than driving on nice flat roads, they were really impressive roads. And the whole scenery was beautiful. There were a bunch of rock formations, mountains, nice greenery. It was a beautiful drive. And along the way, I was calling out all of the elevation signs that I saw that were on the side of the road. It was like 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 feet, 8,000 feet. We arrive at the retreat at Mount Charleston Peak, which oddly enough, even though it's called that, is not actually on the peak, but it is about 8,000 feet up. We parked in the front, I back in, and I take some sexy pictures of Reaper, which I will post right here. And as always, a reminder to not only like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, but follow me on Instagram. I have two accounts, three accounts technically, but two accounts that I use very frequently, Tara Babcock and Tara Babcock IRL, so I would appreciate the follow. And hopefully you don't mind a plethora of Jeep pictures from now on, but don't worry, there'll be some titty pictures as well. So prior to getting there, since it was only an hour away and since I wanted to actually talk to the people and not book online and have to deal with another third party service if I had to cancel, I decided to just book once we got there. It hadn't failed me before when I was traveling a million times for modeling and it didn't fail me this time either. The resort was basically 
empty, like entirely empty except for a few people from the staff, which I was really enjoying because you guys know I'm not a people person, but Jay was getting Shining vibes from it, which kind of makes sense because we had watched The Shining just in week one. So I guess it was fresh in his mind that if you go up to a mountainous place in an isolated resort, that possibly you would be murdered. But I was up for the challenge. So I had done some research prior to getting there on the retreat and on the website, they said that they had these mountain view rooms and that's what they were called, mountain view rooms that had balconies. And I had seen the balcony and I had this perfect idea for a picture of me in the morning when the sun is rising with my back turned to the camera and one of those white hotel towels. So I wanted a balcony room. So I ask at the registration desk for a mountain view room. The girl laughs and says, all of the rooms have a mountain view. And I'm like, okay, then the biggest or best king bedroom, whatever. She gives us the keys. We go up to the room and lo and behold, no balcony, just a window. And it's like not the highest floor up. Like you look out the window and there's someone above you. So we go back down and we're like, well, I wanted a balcony room. That's what I meant by mountain view. I guess she just didn't know what words were used on the website or something. And she goes, oh, that makes sense. Okay. But it's going to take like an hour for the maids to clean one. We say, okay. And we say, we're going to go out and take a little hike and we will be back for the promised clean balcony room. We get back in the Jeep and we keep driving in the direction that we drove in the first place to get to the resort. So we were going beyond the resort. Beyond the resort is just trees everywhere on either side. Crisp, clean air that feels so good. It was so gorgeous. Like you guys, if you ever come to Vegas, skip the fucking casinos that smell like cigarettes. Skip all of the tourist bullshit. Even, you know, if you've been here before, skip Red Rock. Go to Mount Charleston. That place is definitely worth a visit. Unless you're like from Aspen or something and you get that all the time, then yeah, you can stay on the strip or go to Red Rock and do some desert hiking. Needless to say, I was just not disappointed with Mount Charleston. It's crazy how quickly the environment changes with just a few hundred feet of elevation and like an hour's drive. We park at a different trailhead, which has like a big parking area, but in order to get to our little trail, we had to walk back along the road a little bit. And as we were doing it, I was just so in love with the scenery. I can't overstate it enough. Like a lot of the video that I'm inserting here is just me being in awe of the scenery. This place is so pretty. It's like a dream. Something I never thought I'd see again. I didn't get any footage of the elevation signs driving up because Jay was filming and I was driving, but as we were walking along the road toward the trailhead, I did get a little bit of footage of one of the elevation signs, which was cool. So you can kind of get a visual of what I'm talking about. So the hike that I chose to go with that day was just a 0.7 or 0.8 mile hike. It was nothing at all, but it was called Little Falls Trail. And it promised a wonderful little waterfall at the end of it, which I was really excited about. The reason that I chose a really short hike for that day was because the day was already halfway done and I just wanted to get acquainted with the area and the elevation and see what it's like to actually hike there in that kind of biome because I hadn't done it before. I didn't do any hiking in Seattle so I wasn't really familiar with what it's like to go through the woods. I know it's really easy to get lost. I knew I was at a higher elevation so was I gonna have some form of like altitude fatigue? And yeah, I can attest that it was weirdly tiring at first. I don't know what was going on but I was just so tired. There was a little bit of an ascent. There was a little bit of a grade, but it wasn't a hard hike by any stretch of the imagination. It was just really out of breath. Dude, it feels like everything is harder. We're on a 0.7 mile hike and it is uphill, but it's so much harder than usual. And I'm so much more tired. Like we've stopped at two different logs. This is my log. That's Jay's log. But I am loving the scenery. I think up there is Cathedral Rock. And then behind me, it's like sheer rock walls with tons of like Douglas fir trees and other trees. I don't know if only having an hour between being at 2,000 feet and being at 8,000 feet is a big deal in terms of altitude sickness, but it really did feel like the air was thinner up there, albeit more crisp and nice. And the air is so fresh. Oh, I like it out here. So I was just walking, following the path, minding my own business. I was not wearing hiking gear. I was wearing like a skirt and some non-hiking boots that were still boots, but were pretty jacked up. So I wasn't too surprised when I started slipping. I thought I was walking on some slick rock or something. I look down and I am in the middle of a puddle of ice, like thick ice. Holy crap, this is ice. I, uh, I somehow ended up on top of ice without even noticing it. <laughs> There's a rock like engraved in it. I don't know where to step that's good. That's fucking so random. Ice water, free flowing water right next to it. Very surprising. It was cold, but it didn't feel that cold and I hadn't seen any water or any rain prior. So we get all the way back to the waterfall and here is my genuine reaction to seeing the waterfall for the first time. Woo, that is so cool. Whoa. Of course, 
course I had to take off my pack. And of course I had to get some pictures for the gram and for Patreon, of course. Even though my hands and legs would come in contact with ice cold water, worth it every time as long as no one died. And even then, maybe still. Ah, oh, Tara died doing what she loved, taking pictures of her ass at a waterfall while hiking in inappropriate attire on Mount Charleston. Don't cry because I'm gone, smile because I happened to the internet. And of course, Jay gets back on the argument about how your bones can hurt if water is too cold. I'm not used to this kind of cold on my hands. Don't frostbite. <laughs> okay. It's so cold, like... Do your bones hurt? Guys, have your bones ever hurt? Jay says that every time he gets in cold water, his bones hurt. I don't every know. time? Yeah. What else? It's like rare that it's that cold. Every time you get in cold water. Yeah, but that's like rare. Remember that from the week two video? If you haven't seen it yet, all of them will be linked down in the description. The waterfall was adorable. It was definitely a great little payoff for a cute little hike. Would do again, even though, you know, it's pretty short. There is a hike called Big Falls that we haven't yet done. So hopefully next time we go back, I'll do that one and maybe I'll get an even bigger waterfall for a longer hike. I'll insert some B-roll here so you can get a good idea of its tiny majesty. Did you lose weight on the hike? Yeah. <laughs> so we get back to the hotel after the hike and as promised our room is ready. This is our little hotel room at the resort at Mount Charleston. It has, it has really good lighting, if you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah. I'm so cute. Oh my god. I look like a real mountaineer in my puffy. Okay, let me show you this balcony, which I wanted because I, I told you guys I have the idea to do like a sexy towel shoot from it or whatever tomorrow. It's a little scary. So you can see the floor through there, and then you can see our neighbor's balcony is not really supported by anything. It is cool. It's just scary. Also, something weird. I, I like don't even like standing with both feet on it, but something weird. There's like an outdoor gym down there. What the fuck is going on? What is that? So weird. I'll have to get up the nerve to actually fully come out here. I'm like holding onto the wall as if that would save me. I'm standing on it fully. Because if I take a picture and I film, can take my mind off the fact that I'm two, three stories up. Here's our bed. There's the balcony behind me. It's pretty quaint, at least it's not gross. The lobby's kind of cute, I'll show you more of that later. But the view of everything around here is so fucking pretty. Like, I'm really enjoying this. I thought it would be cool to see kind of like a Seattle-y, Aspen-y, outdoorsy place. And I, but I felt fully fulfilled with like the desert because of how many different biomes they have in Vegas and stuff. Like, you can get some trees. But this being surrounded by trees and like the fresh air, ugh, I like it. <laughs> Isn't that right, JJ? It's like, oh. yeah. He's been there in the shadow. It's funny, when it films me, you are literally invisible. That is creepy. Be creepy. <sighs> demon! It's not gonna correct for you. You're just a creepy demon. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> One of the coolest things about this retreat is the restaurant, which we had all to ourselves that night for dinner because there was basically no one in the retreat, as I said before. It's this giant restaurant hall with a big tree trunk in the middle, which I wish was a living tree. That would be way cooler if the place was held up by a pillar of a real giant hundreds of years old tree. That would be legit. But the place just has log cabin vibes, which are 100% my aesthetic. And we got a table right next to a fireplace, which was amazing. We had some good food, we had some great desserts, and from the restaurant you can see through these big ass windows that there's some kind of like swing and stuff going on in the backyard. So after dinner, Jay and I decide to explore the hotel a little bit more. This is what it's like to be in a bear's mouth. You're welcome. These are my family. That's my dog. And go out back and check out the swing and other things that might be outside in the backyard of a retreat. Here's a resort at night. Here's Jay at night. Down in the bottom right corner. Here's Reaper at night. Going to get my shoes. Open oh, says it's here. Oh yeah. It is so fucking cold. Oh, it's getting later though. It's like five or something. What is it, like 50 degrees? 449. It's, it doesn't say on my watch what the degrees are. 60 degrees. Son of a bitch! It hasn't even been 60 degrees today, but I'm gonna swing out here. Let's see how hard it is. Well, let's take a 73. No, that's the wrong one! Swinging on the swing. Cold as fuck. That's not true. This is the wrong Mount Charleston, dude. Well, no, it's not. Why do you think that? Because it's Nevada. It's snowing 16 feet. 
two <laughs> inches. So? It says now and then 17. I thought it was November and then 17. Oh, that's stupid. Jay, take a picture of me before it gets dark. Come on, Jay. Wee, it's cold. Wee. <laughs> We explored a little more of the lobby of the hotel and we realized that there's a bunch of these little square like footrests or tables that have drawers all around the sides of them and each drawer has a different board game in them. Albeit, as with most public board games, they're very unkept. So pieces for Scrabble are like strewn everywhere. There's a book about Jews, I don't know, and a bunch of other games, but Jay and I decide on the most obvious game, which is a giant real life Jenga sitting on one of those footrests table thingies. And since that gaming place that was in my week one video, I had wanted to play some life-size Jenga. So Jay and I decide to play. And at first we are playing the game entirely wrong. We're taking pieces out, but we're just setting them on the table and not sticking them back on top. So it's not becoming a crazy, tall, precarious tower of doom. It's just kind of losing pieces. One of the workers there that we had talked to before, or I think that Jay had talked to before, comes over with her kids and they tell us that we're doing it wrong and then they stay and watch us play and they were really nice people. Unfortunately, I didn't get it on Vlad when I completely knocked the whole tower over, but I did get iPhone footage of it because I told Jay to film it for my Instagram story. So here's that. No, you can't. Well, Isn't there three on the bottom still? Oh my God. Oh, are you gonna, what is this? What is even going on? Is it on one? <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Oh. You gotta replace it. No, it's not possible. <gasps> oh, the whole thing's twisting. What the fuck are you doing? <gasps> no. It's so precarious now. Stupid. That was the hard part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got a little overconfident there. After a few games of Jenga, we went back up to the room and we ended the night watching Family Guy in bed, which was nice. It was some new Family Guy episodes too that I hadn't seen, which is always a fucking treat. November 19th rolls around and I did not sleep well that night. One, because for some reason the moon was like completely full and even shining through the curtains and it was the only light in the entire city. Basically, if you can even call that place a city. What the fuck is this moon? It's a crazy moon. I can't focus on it, but it looks like an even bigger moon. It's so bright. Good night, moon. So it was very distracting. I would wake up and I would feel like someone's shining a fucking halogen flashlight in my face. And also because the pillows were not very supportive of my neck. We got up early and I took some of those sexy balcony shots I had envisioned in my mind. And I would say that I got the accuracy down to what I expected and wanted to about 80%. Here is the most PG version of them. I still need to post that set to Patreon. The set with a little more booty and the front version. But after that, we went down to the same restaurant that we had eaten at for dinner before. This time, the only other people in the restaurant were a group of men which were clearly hunters and then this businesswoman who was constantly on the phone. Yet, we were still able to get a fireplace spot, which was nice. I didn't bring Vlad to breakfast, so I didn't film it, but what I had, I think, was just some eggs and biscuits and some other things. Just a very wholesome, hearty, starchy breakfast. We went back up to the hotel room and got ready to check out. Made sure we weren't leaving anything. I put some makeup on Jay was watching StarCraft videos. Is it a good condition? It's more of a real condition. I'm out of your opponent, I feel. We just saw PVT, my friend. The usual. Good morning. Jay's finishing up watching a StarCraft game. And I am ready to go. Can you see me? There? In the window? It is windy today. I'm just trying to get over the fact that I'm standing on basically nothing. So this morning we got uh, biscuits and gravy, eggs, and I am just ready to get out on the trail. I woke up with a little bit of a headache. I really need to start, especially if I'm driving myself, I have enough room in the Jeep to bring my own <laughs> pillow. The wind is gonna be crazy, so I might not be able to talk vlog much because I'm using Vlad because Victor's in the shop and Victor has the external mic input and Vlad doesn't. It's funny, I woke up this morning and I saw these little white things. I don't know if you can see them. They're actually just like, uh, you know, the things that come off a dandelion if you blow on it after it's like died the seeds for that oh well, it looks like snow and I was like oh shit it's snowing already because it's supposed to snow tonight and we might actually get uh, snowed in here if we don't leave by like four goodbye amazing lighting hello new giant pack <sighs> off we go oh I have one more thing to show you guys there's a ridiculous door on the way out of here what the hell is this 
It might look like a regular door, but it's not, it's not a regular it's not a regular door. They're doing renovations, but I can't imagine how this would help that. So this has been here for a while and it's very odd. It's like a little hobbit door, a little Harry Potter door or something. And we headed out on the day's adventure. Today's hike was gonna be a 3.5 mile hike all the way back to the back of Fletcher Canyon. There are definitely a lot more harder hikes there, but we decided on something a little bit more moderate since we were feeling a little altitude-y, meaning, you know, the air was really thin and we were out of breath all the time. I mean, we could have done something like Mount Charleston Peak. I mean, we couldn't have, but technically we could have tried to since it's like a 20 something mile hike that requires like camping in the middle. But since it's only an hour drive, we'll definitely be back. So I have a lot more hikes saved for my second trip to Mount Charleston, which I hope will happen soon. I think spring at Mount Charleston and summer in Mount Charleston is gonna be amazing since it's always 20 degrees cooler. So when I'm absolutely sick of the Vegas heat, taking my ass to Mount Charleston. It was really nice to just walk amongst the trees. The ground was gravel at the beginning and we saw some cool stuff along the way. I don't think you belong there. Maybe you should try again over there. But as with all good hikes and trails, the farther back we got, the more breathtaking it became. Literally as well. Hello. Everything is harder up here. Even Jay. But, oh my god, I'm tired. We're in Fletcher Canyon with just a tiny bit more to go and it's only like a 3.5 uh, mile hike and we've only gone, you know, the out way. Now we gotta go back. But we've only done half of a 3.5 mile hike and I'm tired as fuck. I don't know if it's because I got a like 25 gallon backpack now so it's a little heavier but it feels pretty comfortable backpack wise so I feel like it's just the air. 25 gallon? Yeah. You talk so much shit, yet you know so little, you know what I'm saying? Can I get a like for that? I actually welcome this wind, because it like makes it easier to keep going. <laughs> Onward. The more we went on, the higher the canyon walls got, which was really impressive. And we even saw this. It's like a giant overhanging canyon wall. Looks like a reaper's face. What does? Reaper's face. Oh, it does. Look at it, it's reaper's face. <laughs> oh, almost fell. <laughs> well, that branch is running. It looks like I must have. Can you do it? I, I'm like too short or something. Aim up a little bit more. Yeah. Put in the middle. Reaper from Overwatch, not my Jeep. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see the face? Post in the comments if you see it and what you think it looks like. Also, check out this giant fucking tree. That thing is old. Tree's gotta be like centuries old and shit. You know, you can read the rings to see how old it is and you can also see how the winters and summers were and each ring is comprised of a dark and a light and I think the dark is summer and the light is winter or something like that and then you can also see if it was ever burnt or if someone ever cut a little piece out of it you can see scars it's really cool isn't that right Jay? Whoa. Whoa, I dropped a knowledge bomb on you. There's also like a little thing that you can take a core sample without killing the tree to read the rings. It's legit. But my absolute favorite part of this whole hike was a stretch of canyon that was completely straight where the walls were at their highest. And if you look back out the canyon, you see just like a wall of beautiful Douglas fir trees, like forest as far as the eye can see. And then in the middle of the canyon was the sun beaming down right in the middle with this perfect lighting. Oh my God. So this is probably one of the prettiest sceneries I've seen on this trip. I'm really trying to get the most out of it. Making Jay use the DSLR while on the hike, which is the main reason why I got the 25 gallon backpack. I just, ugh, it doesn't do it justice. Vlad especially doesn't do it justice. It's like a wall of Douglas fir trees and just straight up and down canyon walls. So I had Jay take some pictures of me. I wanted to do something artistic and I got some of my favorite pictures, second only to the pictures that I got that you saw in week two from my El Dorado Jeep trail. It's just like such good pictures. Jay thought my ass looked really good in this one, but I personally think it looks a little small here. Another cool thing about it was how immense the canyon was. I was feeling so tiny. So I had Jay take some of this footage to actually show the scale of how tall the walls were.
Did you even spot me? We met this friendly father and son along the way who told us that if you keep going past the marked trail, you get to this place where you scramble over a few things and then there's like a cool view and that's the actual end of Fletcher's Canyon. So we decided to continue on farther than what all trails was saying was the trail on the app. It got really tight in here, which is kind of cool. And then also I want to show you guys something. This is natural. This is why all of the rocks are super slick. This is what water can do to erode pathways and shoots in rocks. That's crazy. It looks like a fake rock, like a plastic rock. It's so shiny. Does it look doable to keep going for us? Yeah. The overhang with the one tree is cool. One tree overhang. There's a tree here that's squished between two rocks. Let's see if I can focus on it. Come on, Vlad. You can do it. There's a tree here squished by rocks. And what I think happened is it started growing down here and then it got too fat for the little crevice that it started growing in. We ended at this giant boulder that looks like it was just like barely sitting there. It looked like you could definitely push it, but obviously it was wedged perfectly where it was because of how heavy that thing must be. I'm up on top of that boulder now. Looks like it's maybe possible to go either way. That rock's really cool. I'm gonna take a pic with it. And this is the other way, which I think, it looks doable up until that end point where you would need rope. This way it looks like you could fall and get caught somewhere underneath something. So I'm over here by that precarious boulder, and that's it. And someone wrote, look what we got here, Mexicans. And then drew little Mexicans with sombreros. But that's where we stopped and we also took some cool pictures. Jay's idea for Jay's Instagram. You can see that here. Don't forget to follow him too, at Jekko5. I'll post his link down in the description, of course. When we were initially starting this trail, we saw a sign for a trail called Eagle's Nest. This is a trail that I had seen on my All Trails app, but it said it was easy and I didn't wanna just do two easy hikes. So I was like, let's do something a little bit harder. I hadn't realized that it was actually within Fletcher's Canyon Trail. So on the way back, since we had only done like four miles at that point and we were feeling okay we decided to do eagle's nest trail as well from the actual sign though it literally just looked like a pile of gravel going straight the fuck up and it did not look enjoyable but oh my god after that initial climb i'm so glad we decided to do eagle's nest as well because that is also a breathtaking fucking view that i tried to capture on film like three or four times just because i wanted to show you the majesty that was the fucking panoramic view of mountains trees and everything beautiful. I hadn't seen something like that in quite a while. So we just went uphill the tiniest bit and this view, oh it sucks that it's like not as pretty on camera but oh my god. Jesus Christ it just keeps getting better. You can see a bunch of cliffs over there. Oh, oh I'm in love. You guys have to check out Mount Charleston. Well worth it. All right, last attempt to explain emphatically how pretty this is. Well, it doesn't look as good on camera. It's a fucking Bob Ross painting in real life. I promise you. So fucking cool. I'm in love with this. It doesn't even look real, it really doesn't. It looks like a painting. Definitely a great fucking hike. And by the time we got back to the Jeep, I was pretty tired. We get in Reaper, we drive home, and even though it was only one night away and I had many cameras set up for Eve, all I wanted to do when I got home was see that adorable little demon beast. All right guys, we made it home. I want to see Eve's reaction to us returning. Jay doesn't have the key to the house. No welcome home. No return welcome. Eve! Aww. Hey, baby! Hey! I missed you. You're sleeping? I missed you so much. <laughs> I had missed her so much. Oh, and we made it back before the snowstorm, which was cool. So, welcome to November 20th, the day that we had to take Eve to a vet appointment. So this was another downtime day because we had to set aside enough time for Eve's appointment. As a lot of you guys know, I've talked about this many times in other videos, but Eve is going through this thing where she has some constipation problems and at the same time she has a high fat content in her blood. So we've been working with a specialist to see if different diets and things like that would help before we turn to medication or just monitoring 
monitoring it to make sure that it doesn't get worse and it isn't something serious. But this particular appointment was just at our regular vet for the regular checkups slash dewormer and all of that kind of stuff. We take her in and we see a vet that we've never seen before. This place has multiple vets on call and we don't really have a specific one that we chose. So we just saw her and she was literally the fucking worst ever. She had this accent and she was all like fucking high and mighty about shit. And every question we asked about Eve, she acted like it was a stupid question and kind of dismissed it in like a really rude way. So she takes Eve back for all of the necessary checkups. We tell her about how previously Eve had had some like fecal matter stuck in her fur and we didn't know if that was constipation or diarrhea because it wasn't soft but it also wasn't hard. So she goes in and we're just waiting and we hear the most insane blood curdling cat scream like rah, 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 like crazy. I can't even like oh it was giving me such anxiety because something you guys might not know about Eve is Eve is the nicest cat in the universe. You can stick things up her butt. Well not that we do that but like thermometers for temperature and checking her anal sacs and stuff at the vet. But they do that and all she does is like a low growl and like kind of try to move away. She's never once attacked anyone, bitten anyone, or scratched anyone on purpose. Ever. You can molest her with cuddles and cuteness and she will never do anything to hurt you on purpose ever. Ever. How the fuck did this dumb cunt make her make that fucking noise? I will- Ooh, I was heated at this point. She brings Eve back and she's like, oh my God, were there some cysts on her anal sacs and near her anal sac opening in her butt? So obviously we're concerned and we're asking questions about it. And I say, could it be cancer or anything like that? And she's like, every question I ask, I don't mean, is it cancer? I mean like, could it possibly be an indicator of cancer like ever in any cat ever? I want to know what it could possibly be. And her answer every time was, well, I wouldn't know unless I biopsy it, but we don't want to biopsy it just watch it and I'm like oh fuck you bitch so we're never taking Eve to that vet again and obviously I get very heated when someone fucks with my goddamn cat because oh that's my baby and I don't know what the fuck she did but then at the end she was like oh your cat was really angry so here give her the dewormer yourself so I basically had to do half of the fucking vet's job while she tells me some scary yet useless information because she won't actually give me any additional information she just gives me like what she observed side note later on we took Eve to the specialist to make sure everything was fine with the anal sacs and stuff and the cysts were no longer there. I don't know if she did something to disrupt Eve's butt area, but yeah. Oh, still heated about that every time I think about it. Like the sounds that Eve was making, what the fuck were they doing? But yeah, going back to something happy and fun, we spent the rest of the day playing Death Stranding. Surprise, I know. And then it was also really stormy that day. So there was a lot of rain and a lot of wind and we decided to go to the hot tub, which is heated of course. It's a hot tub, so of course it's heated. In the rain, which is always a fun experience. It seems as though that storm was part of the storm that was going to happen in Mount Charleston that did yield like a couple inches of snow at least and close the roads. So I'm glad that we got out of there because otherwise we'd be stuck there not being able to see Eve, which would be really sad. <sighs> Let me calm down from telling that vet story. Holy fuck. Okay, November 21st, yay! If you guys saw my 2017 birthday vlogs, which I will post the link to that playlist down in the description, we had gone to a place, a bouncy place, called Flippin' Out Extreme. But this time, this year, I wanted to do it again, but at the different location. So there are two different locations in Las Vegas, and this location we had never been to. Hello, we're at Flippin' Out Extreme, that bouncy place that you saw if you watched my birthday vlogs like two years ago. This is my first time coming back here except for it's a different location. I'm excited to jump around and act like a kid and burn calories and then have something to eat because I'm fucking starving already. I love how this is like physical activity but it doesn't feel like it because you're bouncing around and having fun and trying to overcome obstacles and it really reminds me a lot of the more acrobatic side of Lara Croft so I love doing that stuff. If I could have some kind of physical obstacle course that's a lot like the Lara Croft obstacle course that she had in the back of her mansion, if I ever become very very rich I am going to commission some kind of carpenter to make me something like that, something akin to what the military personnel use for training where you go up something and then down a rope and then you got to do it in a certain time. Love that shit. Have loved that shit since I fucking played. I think it was uh, Tomb Raider 2 that had that where you could just run around the mansion and then Jeeves like follows you around. But I have always loved that shit and this place gives me that feeling. The place, as I said, it's got obstacle courses. It has laser tag. It has a place where you can hang out and eat. Of course, it has multiple fucking places where you can jump on a trampoline. Hoops. 
with trampolines underneath of them. This cool tightrope. This place actually doesn't have rock climbing though, which I was sad about because I want to try my hand at rock climbing again without committing to a rock climbing facility. Because if I go in there and then I still can't do anything with the heights, it's gonna be really embarrassing to like pay for time, get suited up, and then you can't do it. But at this place, you could be like, ah, well, I just wanted to try it and then go back to bouncing. What this location did have, which turned out to be way better and I enjoyed so much, was this like rope ladder that goes like this and then becomes pretty vertical at the end. And that became my new challenge for the day. I was going to get to the top of that rope ladder that looked oh so fucking easy, but was oh so fucking not. Go for it. <laughs> We have to beat this today, man. You got the hiking balance. What? Oops. It's an ab workout. match your shirt. What? Your socks ma match your shirt really well. Why would you run for it? Why? did this obstacle course thing that had two lanes. I had Jay film us do it separately and then we decided to race each other. And of course Jay wins, not because he's like so much better than me, but because he jumps through the little inflatable hole and like catches his head on it, trying to beat me, trying to go faster. And like, he's like, oh fuck, I hurt my neck. And I stop and I'm like, are you okay? And then he finishes fucking toxic masculinity at its finest. I swear, I would have won had I not given a shit about his injury. But thankfully he didn't decap himself like he almost did trying to beat me. I'm glad he takes me seriously as a worthy adversary at least. By the way, pro tip, if you are antisocial like I am or you hate children like I do and you want to go to one of these places but not be plagued by screaming fucking infantile children all day, you should go on a weekday at the very opening. These places don't open until like 2 p.m. and I think I know why. It's because until at least 5 p.m. on school days or weekends, they're completely empty which is great. So you can bounce around alone pretty much all day or with a small group of your choosing. Another cool thing that this location had that the other location didn't was this plank that you can walk on and then you hold these like inflatable things and you kind of duel each other until you knock each other off of the platform. Obviously I didn't stand a chance against Jay and we stopped even trying because I would, as soon as I started losing my balance, jump off so that I didn't hurt myself because the worst thing you can do when you're fucking around on things high up where you have to fall into like a crash pad is to hold on too long and like fuck up your joints or like dislocate your shoulder or something. I think I could have beaten him under different circumstances for sure. <laughs> bouncing around for a while and taking some footage, Vlad started acting up. It was weird because I would turn him on to take some footage and then he would turn off but without retracting the lens, which I thought meant that the aftermarket battery was just like completely depleted of any kind of charge and was making it so the camera didn't even have the strength to pull back in the lens. So when I got home, which we're skipping forward a little bit for a second, but we'll go back. When I got home, I tried some regular Canon batteries and then some other aftermarket batteries and a different charger and Vlad's just broken. 
happened. So now he's in a perpetual state of this and I don't really feel like spending the six, $700 for this out of warranty camera that I wouldn't be using anyway because I have Victor. But oh my God, these things are so fucking delicate. This is nothing like a DSLR that's bigger and therefore more hefty and you can drop it, not that I do. And the only thing that will break is the lens. These things have such small parts that they are so delicate. And it's so dumb because Jay had just figured out how to make these little screws stop falling out so the lens gets all, oh, th this is, I've had so many problems with this one. Two point and shoot cameras down and only DSLRs to go through. And unfortunately, my DSLRs don't have great image stabilization. So in week four, you're gonna get better quality, but a little bit more shaky cam. I apologize for that. Anyway, back at the bouncy place. I spent literally three hours trying to finish that rope ladder. Jay had long since given up and he was kind of just sitting there and then occasionally getting up and playing some basketball. But he was basically just done with the place and I was like, I have to finish this rope ladder. Oh my God, the rope ladder. So I've tried like a hundred times and finally, and you're just gonna have to take my word for it because unfortunately I didn't get this on film. I did it. I fucking did it. Ah, it was great. So after that, I tried one more time because Jay and I, when we first initially started, I thought it was gonna be much easier. So I was telling Jay, you have to actually touch the chain portion, not just the last ladder portion. You have to actually touch the chain. And I didn't touch the chain when I did it. And then Jay was like, oh, you gotta touch the chain. Like completely taking away my accomplishment. So I tried one more time to touch the chain. And then he felt really bad because he did count that as me actually finishing it. So we left and decided to get some food. We decided on BJ's brew house. There was one really close to there or kind of close to there. That was a nicer version of the one that we often go to back home. That was nice and relaxing as always. We go home and we go to sleep. November 22nd to November 24th. Okay, so these next three days are another three day weekend off where we basically do nothing. And in fact, I have notes on my phone of what I did each day. So I'll remember what to mention in the video just in case something slips my mind that I wanted to talk about. And literally all I wrote in those three days are death stranding gym, death stranding gym, death stranding gym. So I will save you the time of listening to me head each day with November 22nd, November 23rd, November 24th, which I kind of just did right now, but I I apologize and just repeating the same thing over and over again. Hopefully that was a quicker version doing it that way and explaining it that way. But anyway, I think you're kind of seeing a pattern now. We do a lot of fun stuff and then we take like a three day weekend just to rest and recharge and not be out and about on the weekend because people just swarm all of the good hiking places and all of the cool places to go on the weekend and I ugh, can't stand that many people. So we take those weekends off and while we're doing that, we're resting and recuperating to repair for another big adventure. Adventure. What is that next big adventure that you guys are gonna see in week four, you might ask? Well, here's a tiny little teaser. Hi, and welcome from the Hoover Dam. All right, guys, I'm not gonna spoil it further than that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you wanna actually see my videos or at least get a slightly better chance of seeing my videos. A lot of people don't get notifications on my channel, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I am once again losing my voice, recording these long ass talking portions three days in a row now. And now I have to go edit week two, which you guys saw two days ago. I really hope you are enjoying these. I am enjoying making them as much work as they take. They're very near and dear to my heart. I really enjoy making these kinds of vlogs. I don't enjoy so much just like throwing a bunch of out and about footage together. So I hope you like this sit down plus out and about footage where I can better describe what's happening without just sitting there and talking to a camera while I'm enjoying myself actually on these trips. Thank you so much for coming with me on these adventures. You're fucking amazing. I hope you have an amazing night and I will see you once again on Saturday for the final, the final video in this four kind of five part series of my birthday. Once again, all the links to the other videos will be down in the description. So if you missed one, these aren't necessarily things that you have to consume in order. I do reference them, but it's more like an Assassin's Creed than an Uncharted, if you know what I mean, which you might not, but yeah. References and portions of it might not make sense, but you can consume the whole thing without feeling like you're missing out a lot on characters and storylines. I guess Uncharted isn't the perfect example, but that's what I'm playing right now. It's amazing. Never thought I would like Nathan Drake, but I totally do. See you in the next one. And once again, let's look at some Pokeball booty. Oh yeah. Look at that Pokeball booty. Catch them all, gotta catch them all. Uh, gotta catch all these birthday vacation videos, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't this look like a Pokeball you wouldn't mind being trapped in for all of eternity while you wither away and I don't use you in battle because you're kind of a shit Pokemon, more like a Caterpie or something? See you in the next one.